Hi everyone, David Mala here, and today I'm going to show you some really quick and easy, quick ways to do, uh, and they're really cool, to do some graphing. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use ggplot for graphing, and I'll show you some cool ways to do that. And then I'm also going to show you how to read in an Excel file in R. So this is my R Studio uh, display right here. And uh, what I want to show you is first, I ran RM is to remove something. So I removed this file I had here, test data 3, it's a vector. So what you do is look right here, I've got read XLSX, which means it's going to read this right here, and it's basically called day one, it's a file, called, it's a uh, Excel file called day one. Make sure it's saved in workbook form, or it will have errors, okay? And this just tells you the location of it. So this puts this, it reads it and puts it into this uh, variable or vector right here called test data three. And so if I run that, you can see right here in my environment, I only have test data one, two, and four. I got rid of three earlier. That doesn't exist, so let's read that in. So all I gotta do is highlight that, and then you hit uh, control and enter. And once you do that, it runs. You can see down here, it's loaded in. So if we look up here, you got, there it is, 731 observations of 16 variables. I can go and open up, look at it if I want. I can also go and let's say I just want to know what the column names are in there. I can run this right here. So this is call names and then I would have to put right here three. If I don't put that I'll get a different vector if there's a test data vector. It's very specific into what you have to have the names for. So as you can see right here in that vector I have all these column names. Instant, month, weather, sit, wind speed, casual, temp, holiday, date today, year, humidity, count, a bunch of them. What I'm interested right now in is probably the count, which is the total number of sales per day. And there's also registered and casual, which is casual is new users. Registered are uh, subscribers or people that have already rented at least once. The data in this uh, 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 library or whatever that I'm using right here, in this uh, data set, I'm sorry, is from the University of California Irving's uh, Data Science Department. It's free to use, it's available on the internet. So you go in here and this will actually show you the actual data I'm looking at. You can see right here, registered, count, humidity, uh, temperature, all these things. So let's go back here. And now that we have it loaded in, I have two different uh, ver or, uh, pieces of code here for uh, ggplot. The first one I want to show you here is going to run it with uh, aesthetics for day to day, which is the date in this, that's what it's called, and count. And it's going to do a geom point and geom jitter. Jitter gives you extra points, and the reason being is sometimes you can't see the points you want, they could be hidden. So by jittering it, it moves them around a little bit. Now, this doesn't always work, uh, and I'm going to show you why in a second. And then there's geom smooth. What that does, that gives you, a, and if there is a trend, it'll give you a trend line, and then it'll give you you know, a little area around it that shows you the variability of how correct that line is on its path. So if it's a positive trend line, you see something that, you know, go po in a positive direction. Now, if I take this and run it, watch what happens here. I remember I used day to day and count. So let's run that. And you'll see down here, oh, look at that. It's a mess, right? That didn't work for that one. But, now look down here at the one below it. We've got the same thing, but it's a little bit different structured. Geom point, same thing, but instead we're putting the variables here in the geom point under mapping equals aesthetics, data day count, and then what I've done is I've added another feature. I want to have the color, because this is all black right here, right? I want the temperatures, based on temperature, to be different colors. So I can get a little bit more insight maybe from this. I also added in stroke 1.5 so the dots will be a little bit bigger. And then I put the position to jitter. I kept that the same. So let's do that one to see what that does. So we're going to do the same thing again. Highlight it, control and enter. And bam, look at that. Now I have the days, right? I have here, now keep in mind, this is an older data set. So it's from 2011, 2012. Um, basically two years of it. But you can see here that you have the count, the daily count. The dots are a little bit bigger. So a little bit easier to see. You can also make them much bigger. If I want to make it a three, they'd be th twice as big. And the temperature is over here on the right. 
Now, obviously, the temperature needs to be multiplied by 100 to get the actual temperature. They have it as a as a uh, decimal, two-digit two decimal in the uh, uh, data set, but that's something easy to fix. But what I'm trying to look at here, or what I want to see is, look, all of a sudden, because I put it through this and ran it with this piece of code right here, I now have it plotted by color and, and size, and you can see a pattern here is that as the temperature gets higher, the count gets higher. You see that? And that's for 2011. Same thing in 2012. Now you still have sales down here. You've got a bunch of them right here and a bunch of them here, but the vast majority would be at the higher temperatures. See that? So that's how you do insights and data analysis quickly in R with ggplot uh, again, you would have to load in that library, which is, I think it's under tidyverse, if I'm correct. And uh, this shows you how to do remove, RM test data 3, so if I want to remove it, I just run this right here, it removes the test data set from here. This shows you two different ways of using ggplot, and obviously the first one works more for maybe a financial piece of data. It depends on how the data is structured. The second one worked great here because it's showing me you know that it varies the rentals and the sales vary based on the temperature so just a neat little data set it's free to use and this is a great way to go and get started with uh, graphing some of and looking for insights in data through R as you can see right there it's very simple we loaded in a uh, Excel file it was very quick and easy it took literally a second now this is a very small data set it's got 731 observations that's probably about 730 rows um, in it, but if you had a bigger data set, it had 50,000 rows in it. It's going to take, or of data, it's going to take a little bit longer, obviously. It might take a minute or two or something like that. But regardless, it's in there. It shows you exactly how I brought it in, how you structure the uh, code for each of these commands here, and even what column names does, column names. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for uh, watching and uh, please subscribe to this channel and like the video and have a great day. Thanks.